Welcome back. Today, let's talk about Google's censorship of conservatives. This is in response to a Project Veritas video that came out recently where they talked to a Google employee who provided them with some data and, and told them that they, Google is essentially suppressing conservative views and conservative opinions. We're going to go into that and show a couple of clips. Before we do that, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can always stay informed and get the sources I provide down below. So let's start off with the first clip. Elizabeth Warren is saying that yeah. we should break up Google. I'm like, I love her, but she is very misguided. Like, that will not make it better. It will make it worse because now all these smaller companies who don't have the same resources that we do will be charged with preventing the next Trump situation. It's like a small company cannot do it. Like now, the part that I want to focus on from that clip is where she, a Google employee, says the next Trump situation. So she seems to be implying, or she says outright, actually, that if you break up Google, it won't have enough power, and there won't be another corporation who can stop this situation. So what is she talking about? Well, if you want to be, I guess, positive and try and put Google in a good light, she might be talking about the Russian interference, how I don't want to get into much detail about that, but it is certainly true that in 2016, there were Russian bots and Russian agents who tried to interfere with the election. So you might think that maybe she's talking about that, but I don't think that's accurate because if you take into account everything we know about Google, that just doesn't seem to be the case. For example, in 2016, shortly after the election, Google had a very large get together and co-founder Bryn said that he is deeply offended by the election of Trump and that the election conflicts with many of Google's values. So if you c combine this from 2016 to what we just heard, it seems very obvious that Google is essentially trying to push the election in the way that they see fit, in the way that fits Google's values and morals. So I don't think it has anything to do with the Russian bots or Russian agents. I really think it's just Google trying to push whoever they want forward and to take down whoever they don't like. Now, set aside what you think about Donald Trump and how you feel about him personally. This is a corporation in the United States, arguably one of the most powerful in the United States, somewhere after Amazon, who is trying to interfere with the election. They're trying to push their view and they're trying to bias things the way that they see fit. That is something that we need to talk about and that should be addressed. Project Veritas also received a trove of confidential documents from within Google. This document is about algorithmic unfairness. It reads, quote, for example, imagine that a Google image query for CEOs shows predominantly men. Even if it were a factually accurate representation of the world, it would be algorithmic unfairness, unquote. Now, you may think that sounds really familiar, and that's probably for a good reason, because here we have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez saying something very similar. There's a lot of people more concerned about being precisely, factually, and semantically correct than about being morally right. Now, what we just saw is that Google, much like AOC, is more concerned with unfairness and their version of morality than they are with truthfulness and facts. So essentially, they use the example of the women CEOs and how it's, I guess, unfair for an image search to show what the reality is in comparison to the number of women and the number of men. So let's take that example. According to CNNBC, there were 24 female CEOs of the Fortune 500 company in 2018. So 24 females out of 500 CEOs. So if we do a, sup a simple Google search of CEO, first off, I want to point out that Google has no problem advertising themselves as the second modifier to a, a CEO image, right? So Google is right there. So props for them. They're not, they're not hiding anything. Um, but if you just look at the CEOs pictured right here at the front, excluding the ones that have more than one person in the image, three of them are women out of the total of eight. Now, again, this is a very simple search. It's not, I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm just showing this is an example of where Google does in fact take something they deem unfair, and they tweak the bias to make it seem more, I guess, the way that they want it, and they get rid of the accuracy so much so that they can promote a certain ideal or a certain agenda. And again, you have here on the right-hand side that woman is a modifier after CEO, but you don't see men anywhere around here. It's obvious that Google is in fact pushing one view versus another view. So Google is targeting what they consider to be right-wing news commentators. So that includes um, Tim Pool, Dave Rubin, Stephen Crowder, and a host of other right-wing people 
that they are coming in, they're deciding that they don't want these opinions to have a wide appeal. And so they're coming in and they're putting their thumb down and they're deciding which content the users are allowed to see. So in that video, he talks generally about how Google is using its power and it's and I guess messing with the algorithms to try and suppress right wing views and those on the right. But he also mentions three people specifically. So the first one he mentions is Dave Rubin. And if you're not familiar with him, he is a classical liberal. That's what he calls himself. Some people call him a libertarian, but I don't really see how you can look at him and call him right wing. His policies just don't match up with the right wing. So that just that classification doesn't make sense by Google. Steven Crowder I mean, yeah, he's certainly right wing, so I'm not going to argue against that one. But then the one that makes even less sense is Tim Pool. Now, if you haven't watched any of his videos, I suggest you go and do it because he's he's really well thought out. He's very logical, but you cannot argue that he is right wing. It makes no sense. He's not right wing. If you watch his videos, you can tell that just because he's logical, he doesn't agree with those on the extreme left. They are classifying him as right wing and trying to suppress him. But I do believe that Tim Pool is planning on voting Democrat in 2020. I know for sure he didn't vote for Trump. So he's not, no matter how you look at him, he's not just an extreme right wing guy like Google is trying to promote. And that makes no sense. So we've gone through all the clips that I want to show here. If you're interested, go ahead and check out the full video down below. And yeah, we're going to keep going, though. We have a little bit more to discuss. Now it's time for my own personal little censorship story by Google. Now, I don't want to read too much into this, but it's ironic to say the least. So on this video that we've been looking at, I was able to jump in right towards the beginning and make my own comment and watch it just as it came out. And because of that, my comment actually ended up getting something like 700 um, thumbs up, which is a pretty big deal because that means that you get pushed towards the top of the comment section as a content creator. That sometimes means people click on your channel and they watch other stuff you've done. So that's pretty awesome that I got there. Now pay attention to the two highlighted names because we're going to see those again in a second. But I was informed just a little bit later on one of my channels by DAW that this, con this comment had actually been removed. And I didn't remove it, so I wanted to see what was up. I went into incognito mode and I was being all stealthy and, and all that good stuff. And I saw that my comment is actually not even there anymore. Again, the more replies and the more thumbs up you have, the higher up your comment will be. And it, it wasn't even at the top. So I scrolled down through and I didn't find it at all. So essentially my comment had been removed and it wasn't by me. My comment talking about Project Veritas, about Google censorship, was in fact removed and censored by Google. The irony of that is just, it's just incredible. The only thing I can really think of is that in my comments in the replies, they started talking about BitChute as an alternative to YouTube because of all the censorship that's been going on. So maybe YouTube saw that and they didn't appreciate it and they didn't want people moving over to BitChute. I don't really know. But that's the one thing I can really think of and trying to give them a little bit of props, which they probably don't deserve because, you know, we've already been seeing what they've been doing. So to kind of end before we go, I kind of want to propose that for his incredible investigative work of finding out that I too was censored, maybe we should put Da as the president of Project Veritas. Or at the very least, he should be an employee of some sort because he did great investigative work just like they do. So that's all that I had for you today. I feel like this won't be discussed very much in the mainstream media, so I feel like it's important to be promoting it here. And again, check out that full video if you want to be more informed and learn exactly what's going on with Google. I hit the things that I thought were the main points, but you might find things that are more interesting. Go ahead and watch one of my other videos right here, but before you do that, comment, let me know what you thought about all of this, and go ahead and like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.